Well, the weather for the whole of the south of England will continue as it has for the next few weeks. It's going to be hot and moist, with temperatures rising steadily as time goes on. There's a chance of steamy moments as we move into the... Ah, sod it. We never wanted to do this. We never wanted to be weathermen and women, making innuendos about hot atmospheres and drizzly countries. We didn't want to be child-friendly. We didn't want to bang on about being for over 18s only. We want to talk about our sexy adventures. We want to be lifestylers, leaping from bush to bush as we sail down the rivers of British sex clubs and mountains of crazy experiences. The cheeky purple mamba, the liquid silk pumped liberally into our hand, the rodeo classic brief harness complete with tantus curve, the enjoy pure one stainless steel dildo, the hot octopus digit, the ever so short messages on fab swingers, the sexy friends on Twitter, and the mighty vanilla alternative. With my best girly by my side, we'd swing, swing, swing. Get in the gym or to your car. With our advice, you could go far. We fuck things up and we make mistakes. We talk about our sexy dates. It's getting hard for this to rhyme. Just as well, cause it's better. Hello and welcome to episode number 76 of the Bed Hoppers podcast. My name is Mr. H. And I'm Mrs. H. Welcome back and thank you for downloading our show. Uh, this is one of our special uh, Bed Hoppers Fack Off. Uh, <laughs> that's Fack as in F A Q. I think you just like swearing. What? Or trying to swear. Don't you tell me what to fucking do. <laughs> So, yeah, thank you for joining us today. We're going to be talking uh, with a special guest in just a moment, mm. uh, which means that we um, I might have to play the interview jingle. Oh, my God. We might have to wander back into the Bedhopper archives and drag <laughs> it out, <laughs> screaming and kicking. Maybe it's time you did a new one of those. <laughs> I, I, but it's one of the ones on which you sing. Well, maybe you should do a new one of those. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, we'll play that for you in just a moment. Uh, but we thought we'd jump in and say hello and welcome. Hello. So we've done that, checking things off the list as we go along. <laughs> uh, we're still locked down as much of the world. Yay. Still dealing with Corona Yay, Corona Coaster. Yeah. Yeah, everybody, it's so much fun. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're just ticking along nicely. Um, you know, we've had the funeral now. Yep. Um, we're still we're okay actually. We're, we're doing all right. Actually, on well, this is why I said a corona coaster because it's like an up and down kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, we're at least we're going up a bit up again now. Yeah, we're in the sort of middle space. You know, well, that, the bit where you're going up the hill and you're getting ready to go to the top and then go down again. No, I think, you know, maybe we've gone down the coaster a little right. bit. Right. And we're sort of in that bit where it, where it is literally coasting. Oh, well, it's just like a nice little yeah. ride and yeah. you're not going upside down. This right? is nice. There's a nice breeze in my face. We're going relatively fast. Some on, nice scenery. Yeah. You know, you can yeah. see all the people scoffing snacks as they walk along the theme park. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, we're not at the, the exciting, exciting bit, but we're at the, yeah, yeah we're doing okay. Or the bit okay. where you go for like a splash zone. Yeah. So uh, join us next week for Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> H uh, describe trips to theme parks. Corona Coaster. If you were a theme park right now, Mrs. H, which theme park would you be? Hulk. That's a ride. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I'm thinking they were probably at like an Epcot <laughs> sort of level. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. I think I'm, I'm, I'm at an Epcot, mm-hmm. which is enjoyable, but isn't like exciting. So maybe I'll go with Animal Kingdom. Would you? Yeah, since our life is just animals at the moment. <laughs> just, pets <laughs> just pets roaming endlessly around. Just pet Central. Poor little Yoko. We've we've been walking her every day, which, you know, she normally gets a little walk, like three and a half minutes She's getting of walk. some 5K monsters at the yeah, moment. And <laughs> her little legs can't take yeah, it. Yeah, she is very, very tired. She looks at me like she wants to go for a walk, but also wants me to... Put, it is, is dreading bed. the moment you put the lead on and then she's like man is it gonna be the big walk <laughs> i know i know exciting times we got the dog a new lead um, yeah see it is i would be animal kingdom yeah well it's, I was it's, I thought you're gonna say see we're hitting new levels of mediocrity <laughs> so uh next week we'll be also describing the types of dog walking routes that we are taking in, in our local area thank you very much man so, this is a new low <laughs> yeah i think we're gonna we're gonna play the thing now uh thank you for joining us uh marvelous marvelous thanks to our special guest um who you'll find mm. out about in just a moment cool We've got something that's just for you. Holy shit, it's an interview. We have with us today a really special guest. Um, a very, very pretty lady. Uh, goes by the name of Nautia Black. So welcome to the show, Nautia. 
<laughs> it's very, very lovely to have you with I'm us so today. Excited to be here. Um, and so what we're going to be talking about today with this lady is how do we get started in the world of kink? So to kick things off, I'm just going to ask you, can you just give us a little bit of background about yourself? Yes, absolutely. So hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm excited to chat with you. So uh, I've been doing kink for about 15 years. I started off as uh, just some fun. A friend of mine said, hey, do you want to put this dog collar on? And I said, oh, my God, absolutely. And 15 years later, here I am. I am a kink educator. I live it as a lifestyle as well as do it for fun. And you can find me out and about on Twitter and FetLife. I'm fairly findable <laughs> in this world, but I love kink. And it's uh, one of the things that I'm absolutely obsessed with, particularly power dynamics and also helping beginners get started. So I'm really excited to be, to be here with you today. So the beginners getting started bit is kind of, I think, where we want to start unpicking things. Isn't so you want it? to start at the beginning then is what no. you're saying. Well, yeah, it sounds like a good place to start. <laughs> so I think the, the first thing that, that comes to mind, and we get a few messages um, from people that are interested in kink. I, I guess what they've done is they've gone, you know, maybe gone to the cinema or sat down at home and watched on Netflix Fifty Shades of Grey <laughs> and thought, kink <laughs> sounds like it might be for me. However, this Fifty Shades of Grey thing sounds like utter balls. <laughs> How do I get started? So before we jump that into that properly, what what do we mean by kink? Okay, so great question. So I'm going to actually address the Fifty Shades of Grey thing. <laughs> I, as problematic as it is, if you've watched the movie and got off on the movie, you're doing great. I'm not going to lie. I also watched the movie. There was a couple scenes that I had, like I was enjoying myself watching it. So if you're... If you got started in the world of kink or got interested in the world of kink because of Fifty Shades of Grey, you're, there's nothing wrong with you. You didn't do it wrong. Welcome to the family. You're a kinky fucker, too. <laughs> so um, so what do we mean by kink? Um, so there's kink. There's uh, BDSM. So BDSM is uh, bondage, domination. And there's actually two different versions of what BDSM mean, but bondage, uh, domination, submission, masochism. The S also is uh, sadism, which the M is masochism. Uh, so that's BDSM. And kink is all about um, doing things that you enjoy, either to yourself or other people, or you enjoy having done to you that tend to be outside of the conventional way of playing there that's a broad <laughs> definition of what kink is um so how i define kink is my kink to me is being able to explore the darkest depths of my desires in a way that makes me feel good and makes me feel uh, desirable and makes me feel pleasure and pain and all of those things. So kink can be different for different people. Um, how it looks to me might be very different than how it looks to you. I'm really into power exchange dynamics, which tend to be the DS, the domination, the submission side of things. That's what gets me off. Um, I also, there's people who enjoy pain. This is the more 50 shades of gray version, <laughs> right? The, the floggers and the whips and the chains and the bondage and the rope, um, those sorts of more socially acceptable ways of kink. Um, and then, you know, we have the extreme versions, which, you know, for me is like getting strung up from the ceiling by hooks in my back. Uh, but we also, I mean, there's so many different flavors of this that uh, we that could literally be 45 minutes of me telling you all about different kinks. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and if you think you're kinky, so we'll, this is the wrapping this part up in a nutshell. If you think you might be kinky, you are probably right. Excellent. Very succinct. Yeah, like it was. Thank yeah. you. Um, so one of the things that we, we often find is that there is a bit of a crossover between kink and BDSM and the swinging lifestyle. They're not the same thing, obviously, or hopefully, obviously, because you could do them totally separately. You could do one and not the other. Um, but they do seem to have a bit of an integration. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. So this um, in my local community has been a big part of our conversation because uh, the local sex club here also has a dungeon. And we've seen sort of the differences between the swinger community and the kink community. Um, so I'm going to 
uh, preface this by saying that swinging is a kink. Like it, it is considered a kink um, because it's outside of the conventional way that the status quo views sex, right? My grandma doesn't think that it's acceptable for you to swap <laughs> partners. I do, right? So <laughs> we are living of. within... <laughs> That would shatter my whole world. I grew up in a really fundamentalist Christian family. So if my grandma turns out to be a secret swinger, I'm going to need 50 more years of therapy. Uh, But uh, those are sorts of the things like swinging is a kink. And so being really respectful of that as part of the kink world, I think, is a conversation that needs to be had more. Um, However, there do tend to be some differences uh, that, at least in our local community, that have come up swingers it is more sex focused it's very much a sex focused um adventure uh you go to a sex club looking to have sex uh with other people whereas with kink it's not necessarily sexual which this is the part that really weirds people out um the kink isn't necessarily something you do to as a precursor for sex uh sometimes it is the whole thing and there is no sex there is no orgasm there is Nothing like that. So the sex versus not sex is a little bit different. Um, I think there's also the the conversation around consent, which uh, it, in the swinger world in which I exist in, which miss, the Mr. and Mrs. Uh, also ex- exist in, is consent focused. However, there is a larger part of the swinger community that is a little more nonchalant about consent and kink tends to be very heavily consent focused. We have formal negotiations before every scene. And sometimes those negotiations can go on for days or weeks before a scene is done. I've been negotiating a scene with a friend of mine for over a year now, and we still have yet to do the thing because it's a very complex Scene. But th- those are sort of the differences of like kink is very heavily negotiated. It's very heavily consent oriented. We have a process within kink to um, like when you're doing a scene, we have the red, the yellow red system to say like, hey, I'm actually not really like I need to slow down or like, oh, we need to stop. So I think those are some of the bigger differences, but they do definitely overlap. And I welcome swingers into my kinky world. Mm-hmm. And I I uh, hope that swingers can also feel open to being a little on the kinky side too. But all of it, like if we could just drop the judgments of each other or any sort of the infighting, that would be awesome because I fall on both sides of the spectrum. I want to go to orgies and watch people fuck. And I want to be make sure that I can, I'm accepted and then, you know, feel good in those spaces because I is, like that weird shit. <laughs> it is funny though, because we, you know, we, We've got friends that sort of exist in in that sort of cross cross world of swinging and and kink, but we've also got friends that sit purely on one side or the other. Mm. And you tend to find that there is a bit of judgment from one to the other. There is a bit of a looking down the nose, and it's. But I, I suppose it, swingers are a strange breed in many ways. He says, making a massive sweeping generalization. <laughs> but for a community that is all about being open, you try talking to swingers about polyamory, for example, and they'll look look down their nose at it and i think there's a lot to be learned from all of these different groups particularly in the in the realms of consent and one of the things that, that we discovered when we went to to desire recently and we were talking about this the other day so if you know, do forgive mm. me if i've covered this before but but actually that that um sales pitch the elevator pitch at the start um that life on the swing set in particular uses a real um sort of method of, of connecting people mm-hmm. that you know what are you interested in what are your no's what are your yeses you know how do you you know where, where you tested where you this where you that you know what works for you and what doesn't um w- was fantastic because it actually really opened our eyes to to really make really formalizing that conversation and making it a negotiation where well, certainly our experience over here in the uk has been that um even the the, the conversation about whether someone's been tested doesn't happen it's it's you know whether right. you're going to wear condoms or not doesn't often happen <laughs> no. and you assume that it's a given but some people don't mm-hmm. so there is a you know the more that we can learn from from both communities and and bring that stuff uh it, you know into our lives i think the better off they'll be particularly mm-hmm. around consent it's a it's a tricky one i think very much so you mentioned a few things one of the things that you mentioned was scenes 
Mm-hmm. And it's not a phrase that I'd really heard until I, I sort of looked at the kink community. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about what a scene is? Yeah, so uh, a scene is where the kink starts and stops. So the kink happens within this scene generally. So I, unless you're practicing like lifestyle kink, right, there's the time in which the scene turns on um, and then it turns off. So uh, if you want to be flogged, then we would have our negotiation. We would talk about what you want, what toys we can use, how you want to feel. We would get all of that consent stuff uh, finished, done. And then the scene would begin. And so oftentimes I start my scene by having the people that I'm playing with kneel at my feet and uh, kiss my feet and beg me to play with them or beat on them or whatever it might be, because that gets us in the mindset, that mental state of I am now in control and all of the stuff from the regular world can just slip away. I'm here to please you. I'm here to take care of you. I'm here to take control from you. I'm here to take your power in this moment. And then we do the scene, uh, beat on you, have fun. We bring the scene down and then just like in theater and scene. Right? And then the scene is over. Now you go back and you do your aftercare, which we can talk about that too. Um, and then this, this scene is over and you go back into being you and me, right? I no longer have control over you. I no longer have power over you. I'm no longer dominating you. We are just two people having, just two, two people on equal ground. So it's kind of a, a very broad stroke of what a scene can look like and why for me anyway, it's really important to have like very clear cut scenes because um, I like to go in the fantasy. I want to be completely immersed in the experience and a scene really like allows for that immersion, you know, whereas um, to kind of compare it to swinging, if you go to a sex club, the sex just sort of continues. It's like you just sort of bounce from, or at least when I go to a sex club, <laughs> this is, this has been the experience. Um, and now people are like, oh my God, she's so uppity. Uh, but when you go, it's sort of like you find a partner and then you like have fun with them. And then you're like now found yourself in a threesome and you've now, oh my God, an orgy just sort of <laughs> broke out. And it's this like continuation of um, sex. There's not clearly like a start and stop. It's like you get there and it's on and then the lights turn on and you realize like, oh my God, like what the hell? And then it's over, <laughs> right? It's so there's there's that difference between like kink scene. It's like, it's more like theater of the curtain rises, the curtain falls and everything that happens in between is that fantasy, so, that um, reality. I mean, it's interesting what you're saying about these scenes because, you know, like Mr. H, possibly I haven't heard that terminology used quite so much. Um, you know, maybe because I'm not really heavily into any particular kink, but, um, how about people then who, who just want to (laughs) dabble, they just want to dip their toes in. They don't want it to be necessarily, um, a kind of drawn up kind of contract and they want, they don't want it to be quite so intense a session. They just want to see how it feels or have a, a a kind of diet version, (laughs) if you will. Yeah. No, it's still it's still the same concept, right? Even if you just want your partner to kind of smack you around. Um, and this is where like my consent focus is really heavy. It's going to come out probably more than if I was just a swinger. Because if I'm having sex with you, I want to know that everything I'm doing to you is what you want. So we're still going to have many negotiations. Can I get my sexy voice on? Yeah. Can I arouse your audience? Okay. So this is how it would sound if we were doing this just for funsies in the bedroom and you were interested in spanking, right? I love being spanked. I love spanking people. This is great. But right, if you get spanked too hard, that shit fucking hurts if you're not expecting it, right? And Mm -hmm. it it goes very quickly from pleasure to fuck off. real fast it's like this instant thing so we want to talk about that and we want to build into that so that you're not ruining this sexy sensual moment that you're trying to build with somebody so this is how it would sort of sound so can i spank you yeah and then i'd lightly tap say oh does that feel good for you and you say yeah that feels good and then i'd smack you a little harder so does that still feel good for you do you like that oh, can i do it harder and so all along i'm getting 
I'm getting the buy-in and the feedback, but we're still in a scene, right? Because we're still going through this, you've asked to be spanked or we've decided this is going to happen. You're still in the scene, even if it's not as formalized as maybe, you know, a full negotiation, mm-hmm. but this still counts. We would still call this a scene um, because after I'm done spanking you uh, and fucking or whatever, it comes to an end and I'm not going to walk around you the house. Just then. Randomly. You went from spanking to <laughs> and fucking. Yeah, well, isn't that, I mean, I mean at, at this point, <laughs> isn't that where this goes? Um, you know, and so you just continue the the consensual conversation the whole way and you carry it through and you smack them a little harder and say, how'd you like that? And they say, oh, maybe that was too hard, right? And, and you sort of pull it back. So this is how, as like a, a beginner or somebody who's just dabbling, right, can really enjoy the experience of adding kink into your life because spanking is kinky. Spanking is actually one of my favorite kinks. I, I love, I love spanking. Um, it's such a sensual energetic exchange that uh, can be really, it's just, it's beautiful and I love it. Um, but it also can go from, Oh my God, this is the most pleasurable thing ever to how oh, that really hurts. I don't like it. So we want to make sure that we're having that in scene conversation as we as we explore and make sure to use your words if it hurts say it <laughs> like it's okay we, so, we like to use our big big girl words good or big boy words thank you um, did that answer the question about yeah. scening <laughs> like that <laughs> sort of was <laughs> it really did um one of the things you did mention was aftercare and i, I think that's something that um that certainly newbies won't necessarily know about necessarily so can you tell us a little bit about aftercare yeah, absolutely. So can I throw, throw some psychology in at you? Uh, so for women, and I mean, this is, this is going to be a little bit uh, on the gendered side here. So women tend to have that connection after a sexual scene to connect to their partner. It's a way that um, it, it builds that security. It builds that sense of, yes, this is somebody that I want to be with. And men tend to do the opposite. They, they've tends Those to roll over and just like, oh, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Which is their biological um, response as well. So there's there is some biologic biology here as well as psychology. So aftercare sort of combines them both in a way that you get to have that reconnection while also like solidifying um, your the care that you need. So an aftercare is basically after a scene, um, and or after sex or after your connection, you come together and um, do what is needed and necessary to provide the the mental release, the mental come down that is needed after the high that you get from a kink scene. So there are chemicals being released into your body. They're feel good hormones, both if you're at the top, which is the person generally doing the action, or if you're at the bottom, which is the person receiving it. So both are experiencing all of this release of chemicals and endorphins and all these feel good things. And then afterward, what do you do with all of that? You know, you're on this adrenaline high, you're on this like, you know, <laughs> this like feel good release and then it, it ends and there are emotions that come up. There are things that come up. So aftercare is the point at which you take care of those needs. Now for me, in a dungeon scene, I don't necessarily want that intimate connection with the person I'm playing with um, because it's not necessarily what I'm trying to foster. Uh, but if you're in your own bedroom, if you're playing around with your partner, if you're, you know, having fun like that, it's probably going to be that same person. And so this is the time you come together and you cuddle, you stroke their hair and you tell them what a good boy or girl they were, if that's what you're into. You tell them, you know, you enjoyed it so much. You're just reaffirming that connection that you have with them in a way that feels good. And this should be somewhat negotiated beforehand, right? Because how my aftercare looks, um, it it might be different than how your aftercare looks. And so you want to talk about this, you know, like what makes you feel good after getting spanked or you know, whatever, what makes you feel good after I shove your face in a pillow and fuck you as hard as I can, because that's also kinky, right? That's a, that's a sort of kink, right? Rough sex is kink. Um, and so like, what makes you feel 
that reconnection to your partner afterward. That's what aftercare is. And and it can look different for everybody. For some people, it could be they want a lollipop. <laughs> um, for other people, uh, they just want to go take a warm shower. For me, I want to just be left alone, <laughs> usually. <laughs> um, so, you know, like whatever, whatever that looks like for each individual person, that's what aftercare is. Nice. So one of the things that, that we've heard a lot about are safe words and the traffic light system. And um, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so safe words, which my safe word is stove. Uh, stove. I'm, I'm going to tell you why it's stove. <laughs> my freshman year of college, I went my dorm through a quote-unquote sex party um, and it wasn't actually a sex. I mean, it kind of was a sex party, but it wasn't really a sex party, but anyways, but our dorm safe word was stove and it was written on the wall in electrical tape. <laughs> so in case anybody forgot it, it was there. Uh, so mine is stove. And if I randomly yell out the word stove, something is wrong, like immediately come to my rescue. Um, but that's the old, the kind of former way of doing safe words was to have some random word that you were supposed to remember in a time of crisis that you were going to yell out in case like you needed a scene to stop. But we've since generally moved to the traffic light system, green, yellow, red. But if you're boring me, I will yell beige. Um, <laughs> and, and so that basically just lets the person that you're with, whether the top or the bottom, know that you where you are in your space, uh, mentally and physically and emotionally, it's just a real quick check-in. Um, so green is, you don't usually say green, it's the implied color, uh, but green is everything's good. Keep going. That's great. I'm enjoying myself. Let's have a good time. Um, yellow is like, Hey, slow down. Like something's not quite right. We need to kind of have a little chat about this to just see like, what might need to be changed. Maybe your cuffs are too tight or maybe they're spanking you too hard or maybe you're just having an emotional reaction that you didn't quite think you would. Um, and that's okay. Like this is all okay. These are okay reactions to have. You're not wrong. You're not bad. You're wonderful. And we want to use our words uh, because it makes for a more enjoyable experience. And red, now red it gets a little... Um, you want to make sure you're defining what red means for the person you're playing with. For me, red means stop immediately and we are done. This is over uh, because something has hit the re hit the wall that we just need to call it a day, which is fine. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. It could just be maybe they've reached their limits or maybe they had started having a panic attack. I don't know, whatever it might be. Just really, um, really need a wee. <laughs> Yeah. So like red is like, for me, a hard stop. If you hear a dungeon, if you're in doing public play, uh, a dungeon monitor is the person in the dungeon who's overseeing the play. If they yell red, everyone stops, not just the people who are in trouble. The whole room stops. Okay. Now the other part of red, for some people, they will play it. Red just means stop, have a conversation and get back to it. But for me, that's yellow. Like yellow is a let's slow it down. We can have our conversation. Uh, in and red for me is like a hard stop. So you want to make sure you're talking about these things, so that you know, you know, if you get to the point where it's uncomfortable or because I I wanna I I will share this. Kink can be an emotional release that you may not be expecting, even if you're just playing around in your bedroom, doing what you would consider to be like kinky play, like bondage or something like that, it can still trigger emotional things within you that you may or may not see coming. I'll give you an example from my own personal life. Um, turns out I have a, a mental trigger to rope. And I was in a scene, I didn't yet know this about myself. And I was doing a scene and the rope, I just couldn't, I couldn't, and I started having a panic attack and I, I didn't know why. And I, this was things I had done before of like being beat on and all this stuff. And I'm having a panic attack and I had to call red because the rope had triggered in me a deep emotional thing that I wasn't quite expecting. So kink, even if it's just like, let's just slap and tickle can still be 
something that brings things up. So you want to make sure you're not eliminating those things, but planning for them and making sure you have a plan B just in case. I think there is something in the the safety aspect of that, both from from a sort of mental well being, but also uh, with kink, there's a you know some very serious health risks if you go about things in the wrong way and you ha- and you haven't prepared. So one thing I would urge people to do if 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 they can and they're considering a bit of a journey is to do some research, you know, sort your shit out before you dive right in, because actually, you know, the last thing you want to do is hurt your partner. Well. Um, you know, last thing to do is <laughs> not unintentionally yeah. hurt your partner. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, even if you, you know, especially if you're considering things like rope play and bondage and all that sort of stuff, there, there are some real repercussions for not going about it in the right way. So I'd, I, I would definitely suggest that people seek resources and seek help before they just dive right in and, and talk to people. So things like Fet Life and, and we'll come on to resources in a little bit are really important because they give people a chance to explore this and ask questions. And that's so critical to, to especially the sort of when you're going into your deeper, darker worlds, um, safety is just paramount, really. Mm. And, and I think yeah, this is, I was going to say, I think this is why sometimes people uh, do shy away from the world of Fifty Shades of Grey, because um, in some ways it's maybe being responsible for people being irresponsible with kink in some ways you know and they've kind of watched these films and thought i can do that i'm off to a hardware store and i'm going to get some cable ties and surprise hubby and off we go (laughs) so i think sometimes maybe people don't don't give it credence and maybe don't do their kind of research and give it the kind of uh the respect it needs and some people put handcuffs on too tight and and (laughs) almost ruin their husband's wrists for (laughs) not as a result of watching 50 shades of gray i might ask (laughs) No. It's not my fault you've well, got weak no, wrists. I, I think that's <laughs> really good points because like, so of course you would think like with extreme kink, which, you know, I've had hooks in my back and I've been strung up from the ceiling by the hooks in my back. Of course, you're going to take like dire precautions to make sure you're not hurting the person that you're playing with. Like you, like we had mathematical calculations in all of that, you know, like it, it was this big, long thing to make sure that I would be safely suspended from the ground and 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 then we have things like bondage or uh impact play which is flogging it's uh spanking it's uh your um oh the the, the, anyways the things that you get hit with right that everyone looks at and it goes oh this is easy anyone can do this well it's actually technical skills and there are it's easy to hurt someone doing bondage like handcuffs are actually really bad to use as a bondage device tell me about they, it. <laughs> um the thinness of the handcuff uh can actually do serious permanent damage to your wrist and so uh just straight up handcuffs without the fuzzy and the or anything like that um are i don't don't use them please don't use them uh, and the placement of bondage is very important. The thickness of it, because you can't actually do permanent um, nerve damage to areas um, with bondage. And so you do you you made an absolute amazing recommendation. You want to do your research first, right? So when it comes to impact play, there are certain areas of the body that you don't want to be hitting. Um, you don't want to hit someone's kidneys, which is the number one thing I see in the dungeon from newbies is people beating the shit out of their partner's kidneys, Uh, which if you take your hands and just put them like right, and you can't see me, but imagine what I'm doing, but imagine... It's like you're about to do the time warp. (laughs) So like you, it's like that part of the small of your back. If you just put your arm behind your back and rest it there, that is a no-go zone. Where your arm is falling is a no-go zone. And because your partner's kidneys are there and you, if you hit them hard enough, you can cause serious damage. So there are lots of things like, yes, they can be done, even if you're just sort of beginning. And I don't want to scare anybody because go gentle and do your research and you'll be fine, but please go gentle and do your research so that you can be (laughs) fine. We want hurt. We want to hurt our partners. We don't want to harm our partners. That's very, a very, a very critical good difference. Distinction. Yeah. Mm. And I, I think the other thing that I would um, urge people to to not do is get drunk and try this. <gasps> I was going to say get the high same. or yeah. any number of other things because, you know, it impairs your judgment and it impairs your ability to control yourself. So, you know, what might feel like a simple slap to you when you're 
when you're sober. Three sheets to the wind. When you're three <laughs> sheets to the wind, that, that's a very different level of tactile ability, I'm afraid. Mm. So it's it's really important to, to to try and remain sober, which is difficult for us at the best of times, we know. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's one of those things that, that, that could end up really doing damage to someone. Mm, definitely. So one no, of the things... that's such a good point. Thank you. It's just the fold in my trousers. and But, you know, it will get better. Um, so one of the things that I did want to talk to you a little bit about, and one of our friends mentions it every time we talk to her, is subspace. Oh, yeah. You do hear that term. Um, which always makes me slightly excited because it sounds a bit like hyperspace. But on subsequent learnings, I've found it's not the same thing. And <laughs> you can't make the jump to light speed with subspace. But do you want to tell us a little bit about that? uh subspace nine is what we call it um so there's subspace and then there's also top space which is the one that doesn't get talked about uh which is how you feel after topping someone uh so subspace is sort of that floaty feeling that you get after a scene or during a scene you actually usually go into it during a scene and this is why before i start any scene with anybody that I'm topping, I make them kneel at my feet, kiss my feet, do those things, because I want to get them into that subspace as quickly as I can, because one, they're more malleable and adorable that way. And two, because that's what people are after. They want that feel good high. They want to feel like they can let go of control. They want to feel like they're in a safe space that um, they can just enjoy themselves. And uh, for me, when I was, uh, when I bought him for somebody, I want to feel into that space of complete release, right? I, I'm a very successful person. I live a very, you know, go, go, go life. I'm in charge. And sometimes when you just want to give that shit up, you want to give that shit up. And that's what part of what subspace is for some people. Uh, it's also the chemical reaction that your body is having to all of the feel good hormones and endorphins that are running through your body. Like it is an actual biological response as well. So top space is the other side of that. And I actually enjoy top space a lot more than I enjoy uh, subspace these days. Um, so top space to me feels more like that feeling when you walk in a room full of really fucking important people. And you're about to own your shit and win. I don't know if anybody else knows what that feeling feels like, <laughs> but it's that feeling. Like you own the room, you control it. You have absolute control in that moment. And it's like that high, that power high. That's what it feels like for me. But it's deeply connected to pleasure and making sure that the other person is also enjoying it. So it's like a power high, but with somebody else's pleasure at the forefront of my mind. Um, so those are sort of the two, there's subspace, which is when I feel it that more like floaty, like, oh my God, everything is so good. And I just want to like eat an ice cream cone <laughs> and cuddle at your feet. That's subspace. And top space is like, I'm large, I'm in charge, do the fuck what I say but I only want you to do what I say if you enjoy it. <laughs> so <laughs> distinguishing kind Phenomenal of Phenomenal caveated power. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although I have to say, when you said that you, you stand above someone and they're kneeling at your feet, my initial thought, that, and this is why I'd probably be not so good at this, is I would want to say, kneel before Zod. I and would have put it, good money on yes, you saying that, Mr. H. It, it just, I can't help it. <laughs> it's the Superman reference that leaps out at me. Um, it's <laughs> perhaps leaping taller than a small building that one could leap over. <laughs> but absolutely, it's um, it, it must be uh, quite a powerful feeling. I mean, if that's what you want to say, kneel before me. What did, what did you say? Kneel <laughs> before Zod. <laughs> General Zod. It's a Superman. Superman reference. Okay, awesome. I know absolutely nothing about pop culture, so I'm the most uh, ignorant person when it comes to any of that stuff. That's okay. We yeah, can carry no, that part, no problem. <laughs> excellent. You're in charge of that. Um, no, that is what it feels like. And, and before we started this interview, I was saying, like, when I show up in the dungeon in my heels, I'm six feet tall. And I'm not a tiny person. So I already have that physical command of a room and then to 
tell someone to kneel and they do, and then kneel and kiss my feet and beg me to beat you. That is a feeling, right? That is, that is like a, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little excited thinking about it. Um, <laughs> Someone's looking it, a little squirmy in that chair. I, know, I am. I'm, I'm very excited thinking about it because it, it does, it does something to you to know that someone trusts you enough to give over that sense of control. That is power, but with absolute power comes, you know, res- absolute responsibility, right? You have did you just to, quote Spider-Man at us? I was going to say, he is genuinely like, oh, that's a Spider-Man quote. <laughs> with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> yes. And so, like, you have to know what you're doing. This is why research is really important. And this is why communication is really important. I'm not trying to rain on your fucking parade and tell you to talk to each other just because I'm being mean about kink or trying to be a gatekeeper. No, I want you to have fun. I want you to enjoy this. I want you to get off on it. I want you to like have that moment of deep, intimate connection that is really hard to get any, any other way because there's that incredible trust that comes with this. And with that trust, with that power, with that control, comes orgasms that you can't even imagine. <laughs> like, it's also <laughs> true of this too. So we want to have like this deeply intimate, connected moment, and it starts for me at that moment in which we connect with each other, and we know who we are in that moment. We've agreed to be this for each other, not to each other, but for each other. And I don't know. It, it's just. It's beautiful, and I want everyone to try it, and I want everyone to try it safely and consensually. Um, I would, other people would say sanely, but I'm probably one of the most insane kinksters. So I don't ever like <laughs> drop the word sane, um, but safe and ish, safe ish, as safe as possible, and consensual and communicative. Excellent. So, We've given, I think we've given people a pretty good overview hmm. of, of things. Um, is there anything else that you'd want to add into that at all? Read some books. Yeah, do some research. Um, check out good people. Like the, the thing you had mentioned Fat Life earlier, and I actually don't spend much time on Fat Life because there's a lot of misinformation. So check your sources. And check your facts before you dive in, because there are a lot of domly doms on the internet who tell you this is the one true way as the kind of running joke um, in the kink world. But make sure you're learning this stuff from reputable sources so that you're doing it in a way that is safe and fun. How how does somebody find themselves a dom? Or how do they become oh a sub? <laughs> <laughs> um I okay well if we ever get to be out of quarantine go to some <laughs> events uh start with your local munches get to know the community if especially if you're looking for an actual like dom or sub like um if you're in a relationship if you're listening to this podcast I'm really gonna guess that you're probably into the swinger lifestyle more than mm-hmm. anything else swingers tend to already have partners or they're at the center of the they're me and they're the the magical unicorn that exists to please couples around the world. Um, so if you're already in that dynamic, like you're already in a couple, um, ask, ask your partner if this is something you'd be interested in. Like, Hey, would you want to beat me? Or like, Hey, could I, could I beat you? And I say beat, not like in the domestic violence kind of way, but in the like fun kinky kind of way. Um, so start off by asking your partner, if this is something they would be into. And I know this is a really, really hard conversation to have sometimes because we don't want to be judged by our partners for the things that we like. And sometimes kink can be considered taboo. Um, but if you are partnered, ask, start there. And then if you're not already partnered, yes, um, your local munches are a really good place. Fet life is a good place to sort of get acquainted to the community, meet people locally who might want to play their groups on Fet life um and things like that uh those are probably my two that i would go to first munches and fat life are a good starting point but if you're partnered ask them you never know so i'm gonna pick out a couple of things that what you said there uh one is um actually on taking an online test um we uh, there's a million of these bloody things <laughs> out there 
But it's actually really interesting to do that as a couple and take it and compare, you know, to see what you're interested in. And you never know, you may automatically come up with that level of compatibility. You might think, oh, I'd, I'd love to top someone. and Oh, I'd love to be a bottom. Boom. You're already, <laughs> you know, part of the way there. Now you need is a bit of education and you'll be you'll be, um, you know, having a fun time before you know it. The other thing is um, you mentioned the word munch. Now, it's, it's interesting because we we hadn't heard the word munch until a few years ago. Mm. Um, and it totally it sound it's such an odd sounding word. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure that everyone will know what that is. So do you want to give us a, a little bit of a rundown as what's a munch and what might happen at one? Well, a munch, uh, the first thing that ever came to my mind, it's a Chuck E. Cheese character. <laughs> <laughs> is it? A, munch, a Chuck E. Cheese character. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just want to so, do the but it's not, that's not what we're talking about. That's not the kind of munch we're talking about. Um, a munch is a get together of kinky people, and it's called a munch because you you it usually has food. So um, you munch on food. I don't know. That might just be an American. What, what term. our gentle listeners won't won't see is, is your Nortia, amazing miming. Um, is miming <laughs> eating food like like we've never seen food before? I can assure you, we've. But you have an invisible burrito. But she's eating with like a claw. It's a. <laughs> Maybe she's eating like a handful of crisps. It's all finger food. Yeah. Popcorn. <laughs> so you, you're munching. Uh, that's why they're called munches. And then there's a slosh, which is where you'd be drinking. So there's munches and sloshes. I haven't and, heard um, of sloshes. Have you? No, I thought a slosh was something I took when I went to the bathroom. Oh, God. I have heard of munches, and we have been to a munch, but I haven't heard of sloshes. Yeah, so so munching is where there's food, uh, generally, and a slosh is where there's drinking. Um, so that's the two that you might come upon in your own community. There's also meet and greets, which uh, are another term that we use in the community. Uh, and there's online munches. Uh, my group now is doing online munches because I can't see any of my kinky fuckers in person <laughs> and I'm, I'm dying, dying over here. Uh, but yeah, a munch is a good place to go. And it's really just an informal place to meet people, just chat and talk. Um, you're in generally in normal clothes, like um, you're not decked out in kink gear please don't show up to one of my munches with a ball gag or on a leash or anything <laughs> like that because we are in public and uh we do like our privacy in this community um but yeah a munch is a good place to start and there's uh, and depending on where you live there might be uh specific munches for what you're interested in so like where i'm at there are dominant dominant submissive munches where the doms all get together and then submissives have their own munch. Um, there's for me, I run the local TNG group, so we're eighteen to thirty-five. And Did you say TNG, TNG, the next generation. That's, a <laughs> that's what I thought. Reference. Yeah, that is a Star Trek <laughs> reference. Um, my secret nerd comes out occasionally, uh, although my pop culture is still very, 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 very limited. But yeah, so we do. So TNG is a worldwide um group it's i would say organization but there's absolutely no organization to it <laughs> we're, we're more like terrorist cells actually which is how we're sort of organized uh we, there's no other really good like uh analogy to use there but uh yeah tng is for 18 to 35 your kinksters so you can find people that mesh with more your style um to see if it's something that you'd be interested in to meet people things like that Cool. It's absolutely the same as the the lifestyle world yeah. for us. And, you know, mm -hmm. there's a number of groups that meet locally and some of them, uh, you know, adopt your style or have a style that you might want want to be interested in or you, you might like. And others, you can tell they're not the group for you. And it's really just a case of, you know, trying and, and, and see what you what you find out. Um, so you've mentioned the munches. Um, you know, there's plenty of online information. There's Fet Life, although you've got to check your info on that. Are there any shows, any podcasts, any books that you'd recommend people check out? Yeah, so there's a couple of educators that um, I I tend to really enjoy going to. One of them, her name is Ignixia. I G Nixia. <laughs> like trying to remember how to spell it. I G N I X I A. Yeah, um, she's very good um, at what she does, and she's very open with her information and. 
um, that that's a good starting place off the cuff podcast is really good. Um, those are some really good starting points. I'm trying to actually, I, I want to give you a book recommendation. I really, really, really do. But damn, if I have one, um, <laughs> and this is part of where the history of kink is really important because it's been such a secretive thing because, you know, modern, uh, BDSM community spawns from the, you know, gay men in the military after world war two coming home and missing that um, connection to other men and that uh, very disciplined, structured life, and yet they had to be very secretive about it. Uh, so Leather Lifestyle, which is the precursor to kink, um, is very much a secretive thing. You learned from your mentor. You were invited into a dungeon by word of mouth. Like you had to know somebody to get in. And this is sort of where in the modern world for as in for as as information heavy as we are all are now um there's very little reliable information about kink other than um oh i'm trying to it will come to me there is a guy that i could recommend um but there's there's about two or three people who've written books that are decent on the topic um but otherwise it's very much an in-person word of mouth thing it's who you know and who are you learning from you, that's why we have conferences. You go to conferences, you find your mentors, you take the classes, and you you learn. It's a it's very much an old school style of growth. It's not, and that is part of why there's so much fucking misinformation on the internet <laughs> because <laughs> there are people that are like have these fantasies in their head and have never actually done it, and so they have these like 99 rules for your slave, which involve really dumb things. Uh, some of them are kind of fun, but most of them are, you know, really, really crazy. Um, but yeah, there's the, the, the podcast says Ignixia is a good start and she will lead you on a really good path, um, down to like, you know, in more of the nitty gritty, like how to stuff. I'm, I'm good on the philosophies and the theories and, you know, that sort of stuff. And she's more of like, here's how to hold your flogger. <laughs> very different both are important but different excellent thank you so one of the things uh, one of the resources I'll, I'll probably chuck out there is that um a lot of swinger clubs certainly in the uk have a kink night and quite often there's demonstrations and experienced people that are there to help you townhouse uh, which is in liverpool mm -hmm. is, is really good at that and uh, they run a really tight kink ship <laughs> not a phrase i thought i'd say uh but they're a really good set of people to to speak to and interact with to find out more about uh, about this type of thing so I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll wrap up the, mm. the show now, if that's OK. Um, Mrs. H, yeah. do you want to say thank you? Oh, yeah, of course. Thanks. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no it's, it's been an absolute pleasure, Nortia. Um, I've been truly fascinated just sitting and listening to you. And, you know, it's, it's, it's quite rare for us both to not just be constantly hearing the sound of our own voices for a bit. So it's been really, really, really interesting just to listen to you kind of tell us more about your world and you know what what people can really get from it if they do it properly so yeah thank you so much for joining us yeah absolutely and i thought of the name of the person so i know we're wrapping up but i'm gonna stick cool. it in there hardy haberman he's a good resource so he's another good like he's og in this world and i couldn't remember his name and somebody's <laughs> gonna hear this and be like you're not really a kingster if you couldn't remember that <laughs> i promise i am i just have zero reference for names so that's a good one too thank you can throw that in well, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure, as Mrs. H said there. And if you do think of any other books in the meantime or any other resources, uh, drop us a line and uh, we'll chuck them on the show notes. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Bye. So what is the kinkiest thing that you've done? What, in lockdown? No, no, just general. What, ever? Yeah, ever. What's the kinkiest thing you've done? Wait, did you see my browser history? Or <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, I thought I'd like cleared all that. <laughs> no, 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 I just, uh, I'm just following your every key move really now. Wow, brilliant. Uh, I, I just don't know. Just how don't can know. I? How can I possibly establish what the kinkiest thing I've ever done is? Well, you think back on your memories. Uh, yeah. Preferably really Got that. quickly. I can't do that. <laughs> Accessing files does not <laughs> compute. No, we've got like 
decades of things. Uh, I can't access all that now. Yeah, you can't. You, you just think about it and you go, what was the really kinky thing that I liked? What was it? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, all right. No. So, um, the kinkiest thing that we've ever done, what would it be? I don't know. I'm going to keep asking you different ways. So if you would describe the most kinky thing that you've ever done, what would it be? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Have you heard of kinky things? What's the most kinky thing that you've oh ever God. done? <laughs> I genuinely don't know. <laughs> some people have regular sex. Some people have kinky sex. What's the kinkiest thing that you've ever participated well, do in? Do you know? Yeah, I know the answers. No, you don't. No, I don't. Of course I don't. I'm just making this up. Oh, my know. God. 